already this is a great start because when I tried to Skype John Callan, he was upside down. I don't know what yeah. he did. He's probably the only That's... man in the world that can Skype upside down, and it just it was uh, pointless. But we are talking about John Callan, remember? Mm. So it's it's yeah. great to see that you're right side up anyway. <laughs> Thanks, mate. <laughs> This is, of course, actors talk about themselves. This is the last one for the year, um, so I'm, and I'm really excited because I know, uh, you know, we've got one of the busiest actors in New Zealand that has we've managed to get hold of. Because I know how busy you are, Mark Hadlow. Welcome. Thanks, Stephen. So good to see you. Yeah, and you look amazing. Thanks, man. You look amazing. Thank you. It's, and this is because you've what? Well, no, well, pies to start with. Yeah. <clears throat> um, sugar, uh, alcohol, yeah. and bread. Bread. Oh, bread. But sugar and bread, the, the, the two things. And I'm exercising every day. So not doing a lot, not busting a gut because I'm getting a bit old. Um, so, But I'm just yeah. doing, you know, just being medium, as uh, as my daughter puts it. Just be medium. Good on you. I, what, well, so what is she? Uh, six? Six and, six and a half? She's six now. Six. six yeah. Six going yeah. on 15. Um, Cam- Campbell is six going on 21. Yeah. <laughs> unbelievable. Hey now, 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 just just off camera, we, we we had a bit of a conversation. Just tell me about the because I know we had the the Sea Shepherd. Um, you know, I've got a I've got a shirt and a sweatshirt as well that yeah. we got at Hobbicon. Tell me your story about why you're wearing that today. Well, sea Shepherd because we we had the Harbour Master in Coromandel, hmm. right? Has been told to get lost because he used the council boat to go and rescue an orca whale. It is unbelievable. How dare he? An orca. He rescued an orca. And then was said that that's um, irresponsible and use of council property that is completely... Um, I mean, I don't know the inroads, okay? I don't know which side. But just from the perspective of publicly what that means mm. about someone actually using something to rescue an orca whale... Is... Isn't that the job of a harbour master to look after things in the yes. harbour? So yes. tell me, yes. have, the seven, but... have the seven people from the council who made the decision been fired? <laughs> I have no idea. I have no idea, but three and a half thousand um, names have gone to a petition. It's apparently gone nuts over here. People oh, are just I'll absolute... sign it. Uh, yeah, and, we'll and, sign, I think yeah, the world will sign it, dude. Yeah. The world will sign it, Stephen. Well, it's it was... just, it's one of those... We live in this age of, of, of you know, risk aversion and accountability, yeah. and suddenly we use all, we lose all human emotion with regards to the things that live in the world that we live in. I know. And crazy. we've got to be careful. We have to be so careful of this. I know. Oh, well, that, that's good. Now, if, 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 if you haven't read the story, folks, just Google it um, about the Harbour Master in Orca. But, Harbour yeah. Master in, um, yeah. in uh, Coromandel. Yeah. It's just nuts. Nuts. I, I just had to ask that. And I've, I've, got a, I've got a, this is my shirt. This is Blue World Order. This is the movie, the sci-fi yep. movie we're coming out um, shortly. One job, because that was basically whenever someone made a mistake on set, you'd just hear a voice go, one job, mate. And that was the, that was the thing. And uh, th- th- this is for Alex. We-, we-, we lost one of our crew guys. A young guy, 25, lost his life a few weeks ago. So that's for you, boy. Um, now, yeah. the-, 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 the crazy world that... Speaking we- of which, yeah. speaking of which, sorry. Yeah. Isn't it funny? I did a, a-, a Hobbit um, I did a Hobbit presentation a couple of weeks ago for Red Carpet Tours here in yeah. New Zealand. Yeah. And we were talking about it, and I pulled out the Aussie flag. When we were doing the Rugby World Cup. Oh, yes, yes. And I put the Aussie flag on the caravan because I'm Australian-born. And do you know what was sad? What? Andrew Lesney had signed my flag. Yeah. Ah. Oh. I just, all the, you know, all the emotion of everything. I mean, he was such a lovely guy, yeah. wasn't he? Yeah. And, and I just felt all of that emotion about what we'd been through. But Andrew Lesney, who was our, you know, our, um, our director of photography and was so lovely. The master of uh, light. And, oh, the master of light. And he certainly was. So, Anyway, sorry to interrupt, mate. No, 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 no. That's that's he, he's a he, he's a man, a man worth um, remembering, especially this this time. Um, Absolutely. Now, that, and, and getting onto the trailer park, um, I've had I've had discussions with with Adam Brown, uh, Gray McTavish, uh, Dino, yeah. Dino Gorman, John Cullen, and we, we were reminiscing about the story when when it took John about six or seven months to realise that the speakers from his caravan. Went on the inside of his car instead of the outside. <laughs> I love it because he would complain bitterly to me mm. about the noise that you and O'Gorman 
and um, Adam Brown made playing soccer. Who oh, else Lace, joined uh, you? No, it was, it was, it was predominantly... Aiden. Yeah, it was predominantly Aidan and Dean were the noisy ones, obviously. And yeah, they were. They, Although it was John, my caravan. I can't believe it. They make so much bloody noise. They, they, they tell them no awareness of anyone else, and it really drives me mad. What am I going to do? And then we'd hear his jazz, yeah. which was like, I love jazz, but it was like really dirty jazz. Yeah. And it was like... It was like uh, and and I just thought, well, yeah, and um, so it was very funny. Anyway, no, no, that, 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 there's um, you know, after it's been like how, how many? Oh God, oh, goodness, I hey, well, Rosie, oh, yes. yeah, well, I mean, Rosie's six now, and she wasn't even born when I when I had my first um, when I had my first costume fitting. I mean, how's yeah. it been for you? Because I've been asking all the, all the boys, you know, and a lot of these interviews have been very Hobbit focused, obviously, because you know we went through this experience together. How's it been for you as an actor, like post that job, especially living around Wellington? How's it been? Do you know I I, I don't want this to sound disingenuous because the film was fantastic and the company yeah. I kept and what we experienced on the film was extraordinary. Mm. There's nothing there's nothing that can uh, surpass that. Mm. But I don't think it changed anything from the perspective of life in New Zealand. Yeah. Being in The Hobbit as an actor made no difference to employment here in New Zealand. Mm. Outside of The Hobbit, if you know what I mean, outside of <clears throat> you know, um, um, the picture. Um, and so, you know, it's still, been, it's, it's still been a graft. Everything I've wanted to do, it's been a graft. Um, and, and that does, I mean, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Mm. Um, I don't think it made much difference to this perspective of people thinking that uh, he was in The Hobbit, so he's got talent, he hasn't got talent, he can act, he doesn't act. It's all about us mm. um, realising what we have and trying to uh, project that in a good way to something else. Yeah. That's, that, that, it hasn't changed. Nothing's changed. Well, to be to be honest, though, I, I think you played a really straight bat to it. I, I remember having conversations earlier on and, you know, it was, to me, it was... a uh, amazing experience but also was quite an ego trip and some of us and i know i was one of them i got caught up on that and you know go to la and do this and this is going to happen and i was like come on i was like mark are you going to come to la and you go no no i'm just going to potter around here and go oh come on you're crazy but like you you picked it like you you just yep. kept solid and yep. kept working i mean i'm in that place now but it took me a long time to to really get that to, to me there's a whole lot of expectation created around the, the the job and like some of it was created by other people a lot of it was created by myself after listening to other people but I, but i i remember you were just like it's not going to change anything we're still gonna have to do what we're going to do and you know i was like come on man you, this is going to be take advantage but you were dead right because when we came yeah. out of it we're like yeah and then you it's like and there's no one there <laughs> it's sort of finished and it has been great but yeah it's it's um you, do you know i think a lot of i i think a lot to do a lot of it is to do with reality tv yeah i think reality tv is eating away at the um at the essence of what being talented and what being um being a, an actor is about mm -hmm. because it's theme and minutes of fame it's like you look at MasterChef. I mean, I go on about this when I did Mammal, Middle Aged Man and Lycra, and I'm two of that, the whole of New Zealand. We did, um, we did over, what is it, 28,000 people came and saw the show. It was mm. fantastic. It was a one man and show. We'll, people, we'll, we'll talk about it, that shortly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I absolutely berserk at the end of the show. And I said, mm. why, don't you, why don't you act with your remote? Turn your frickin' remote off and turn reality TV off mm. and watch acting. Uh, because it should, I mean, acting should be elitist from the perspective of talent. Mm. It should be the best of the best, you know? Mm. Uh, and I'm not saying that we are. I'm not saying that you are. I'm not saying that we are. But it should be the best of the best. Mm -hmm. And um, Because otherwise it's, it's giving people false hopes. Mm. It's so weakening. We've mm. suddenly got quantity, mm. not quality. But the, I think the good news is that a lot of these shows are dying in the ass because... Um, well, they need to. Well, because the pay TV channel, I mean, the, the free to wear TV channels are struggling. Um, and, like, you know, what's, you know, it sort of started with House of Cards, and you've got these amazing series now on, like, especially here, we've got Stan, we've got Netflix, you know, there's, there's Presto, we've got so many, um, yep. you know, there's pay TV, there's Amazon, there, there's so yep. many things that you can buy now. And, like, TV is. Is, is it it's like a golden age we're reaching a golden age of television and it's like all binge watching and it's it's changed the way that people watch things um but but what it has meant is that you've got the best actors 
are on on the TV shows, you know, and and it's it's the the, the, the quality is so good. Going, yeah, they're already and they're going nuts to get on them too. Yeah, totally. Yeah, you know, which is a, a great indication of mm. like of um, of uh, you know it does require good actors. Mm. You know, mm. I'm not saying that we are. I'm not saying anything like that. But what I'm saying is, it's great to know that that this 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 phase of reality TV hopefully mm. has peaked and is on the downside. Yeah, uh, you know, I would love to see it personally. Yeah, um, but you know, I, I, as I said, you know, when when The Hobbit finished, I had to engage and I had to get on. And I just re-engaged my theatrical career, and away we, you know, away we went. We, I did um, 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 a couple of plays after that, which went, um, which was extraordinary. Um, you know, we we, we did, uh, um, um, oh God, I can't even remember them. But these plays had suddenly returned me to my roots, where I'd come from. And you know, I had discussions with Ian McKellen about this. Mm. You know. Uh, about the, the, the roots of where we come from mm. and where we've spent. And I have spent now 40 years mm. as mm. an actor. Mm. Uh, and I'm very proud of that, Stephen. Mm. You know, to have spent 40 years in this career. Mm. It, it, I'm not saying, oh, what I'm, what I'm saying is it's wonderful. And I want to actually make sure that I um, I share that as a, as a, as a, as a positive with mm. people who want to engage it as a career, but boy, you've got to go for it. You've got to work hard at it. It's not something that's going to be handed to you. Mm. And I've always said that, you know. Um, yeah, well, I mean, I, I guess a lot of people who look at The Hobbit, they look at the characters, you know, they see the publicity we've done. They don't know, like, the rich vein of history for, for you in New Zealand. I mean, I grew up watching you you know, on television and, you know, seeing your, your name plastered over stage shows and all sorts of things for years. You were, you know, you were the, you were the comic genius guy, you know, um, and, you know, that's, it's great that, you know, you've got that love for it and that's something that you can, like, immediately go back to because that's something that I've discovered. It's about the art and it's not about getting ahead or getting forward. I mean, sure, there's, there's paying the bills, but... What's, it's taken me this long to realize it's about doing the job and not to get anywhere, but just, just the, I just have to do it. I just have to do yeah. this stuff. I have to get it out. I, this is who I am. It's about the doing. It's mm. always about yeah. the doing. And you do that to the best of your ability. And you've either got it or you haven't. Mm. Some people can earn it. Very few can. Mm. You, you've got it. There's this thing, you know. Um, mm. And, um, you know, I mean, this year was such a challenge 2016 has been such a challenge mm. i started here with macbeth uh ross um gumley at the court theater cast me as macbeth mm. about a year and a half ago um and uh, and i was really keen i had some very huge expectations luckily i had lara mcgregor who was going to play lady macbeth and, and the cast were fantastic mm. but and i spent four months learning it and and all i can remember was the conversations that i had with ian mckellen and mm. and uh and, and, and Martin Freeman and Richard Armitage about theatrical roles and, and mm. stuff like that. Nothing had prepared me uh, quite what it was like. We were going to play Macbeth. Mm. And, um, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't, um, I don't think I was ready for opening night, but by the end of the season, the challenge had been met. And with the cast that, 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 that we had, I, I was really proud of the work at the end, but, oh, my God, it was such a challenge, mm. you know, to learn. 1,284 lines of Shakespeare over four months, October, yeah. November, December, January, every day to sit down and learn lines for three hours a day. Mm. And, and you, you don't get to do 20 lines and then have lunch? No. <laughs> like <you do>. no. <laughs> On a you film get, set. <laughs> you get to learn 20 lines, then you go out and clean the pool and do the other house chores that you need to do. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's unpaid. That is yeah. unpaid, Stephen. Mm -hmm. Nothing... nothing you know, that's four months of hard work. And uh, and I'm not saying that that makes us special. What I'm saying is that that's the work you have to put in. Mm. That's the graph. Mm. That's the challenge. Mm. And that's really, look, I'm bloody, I'm bloody doing all this. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but see, but that's what keeps me going. And I was just having that conversation today about, you know, it's been quiet year. And I saw my agent this, that just today as well. And it's been quiet in the second half of the year. But... I've been going and I've been nailing auditions and I've been 
getting to see new people and having some great feedback. So I know that I'm doing the work and I know it's coming off and I know that the work's good. Because I, I read this great thing the other day from a casting director and they said, look, you, you know, forget about trying to score a role. Your job is doing the audition. That's your job. And then if it fits, if all the other stuff fits, then, then you'll, you'll land it. And, you know, I, I always remember that. And, and so I've been doing my job. And the fact that some haven't landed, it's like, you know, I, I, I saw the analogy of watching the cricket and they said, look, this guy will bowl worse than he did today and he'll pick up two wickets and today he's got none. It's it, the, the reward sometimes comes along. And, yeah, if I, was, if I was struggling and really getting bad feedback or I could try to break in, it would be different. But I guess, yeah, you have to have that sense that, it's just going to land eventually. <laughs> eventually, it's it's madness. It's total madness. Yeah, it, it, it is. It is. And um, <clears throat> no, I'm I'm auditioning. I've auditioned. I'm at maybe twenty times, twenty twenty two times this year, and mm. and we're having a big fat zero mm. on all of those. Mm. You know, and the the uh, and Olivia, my daughter, who is just trying to uh, fledglingly. Um, do it go into the acting mm. she's seen this happen to me over the last you know uh, probably 10 years that she's been cognizant of me being an actor mm. and she realizes how hard it is and she realizes the, mm. the, 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 the the not the devastation but the negativity that comes from not getting the job because you you always doubt yourself you think mm. God have I done really the best job I could do on that I audition terribly. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Mm. I'm not a great auditioner. I don't. Mm. And I, I, I think I, I, I'm hoping that the experience that I have, that someone who I audition for can see beyond the bad audition. Yeah, and like, and because, we, make, we, we we make things up. I had an audition today for a for a commercial, and you know, went really well. And and I had a recall for another commercial with the same casting director, with the director I know really well. And I remember walking out and. Whether I was rattled, it was it was a couple of days after I had a bit of bad news, and 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 I was a bit rattled, but I did the job. I was really focused. There was people talking in the waiting room, and I really hate that when they when that happens. I need to get in the zone. And anyway, all this stuff happened, and he goes, "Oh, great!" And I said, "See you, mate. See you, mate. See you." And then I walked out. I got into my car, and I thought, oh, "I never said thank you to my scene partner in the job," and I was just horrified. And I thought, "I won't get it. That thing I'm a dick to work with," and and it just it just sat on me. And I went in there today, and I said, "Oh, look, I walked out the other time," and he's like. No, nah, we didn't even didn't even think about it. The reason yeah. he didn't say why I didn't get cast for the job, but it, you know, it went go through through an agency. There's a number of reasons, you know, and, and it just it was just like it's silly. Quite often we just make up those sorts of those those reasons about why we don't get it. Tell me, yeah, when, I, when did it all start for you? Like, you know, I know because you've got an amazing singing voice. Also, was it the singing or the acting that came first for you, and when? No, the acting came first. I I think when I was about ten. Hmm. I was about ten, and I did rinse the blood off my toga mm. in the vicarage um, parish hall. Right, Hamish Flavius Maximus. I'm a private Roman I. My number card is IV one seven five five six five five five. Comes in handy as, as an eye chart. Anyway, I was sitting in my office one day, and my secretary walked in. Hi, you flame. What you been doing? Anyway, it was like <laughs> so. I loved all these characters, which was just <laughs> anyway. I did that in, the, in, in Dad's because Dad was a vicar, so I did mm. the. I did it in the school in the in the parish hall, and there was about a hundred people in there, and it was hugely successful. The people were laughing, and I thought, "Hey, this is a pretty good gig. I quite like the idea of this." People laughing, mm. and then I went to a private boarding school and got it hammered out of me real quick. Um, um, and uh, but I did the, the odd house play where I played fourth spear carrier on the right, and um, you know, good practice for Robert. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> And and um, no disrespect, enough, but but there was a lot of times we no, no, yeah. yeah, but um, but yeah, sort of um, and then then into the navy, and then mm. after three years of making tea for the Royal New Zealand Navy Band, I realised, look, I still want to do the acting thing. So I went mm. to drama school at the age of twenty, wow. and the rest is history. Um, and then been a freelance actor for basically forty years, mm. and um, and you know, there's been so many people that have been influential through that time. First of all, it was Raymond Hawthorne mm. uh, in drama school. And uh, then it was Elric Cooper at the Court Theatre in Christchurch. Mm. And then Colin McCall. I mean, all quite influential with regards to the technique, mm. um, the theatre, um, working in, you know, professional theatre in New Zealand. Mm. And, you know, and, and, and just grows from there. And, 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 um, and then the subsequent um, 
sort of suppression of um, professional theatre mm. um, because it, the proliferate the proliferation of funding mm. is so reduced um, mm. uh, since we've um, since we've gone into this you know modern time of like user pays, mm. uh, which is such a shame. But I, I sort of get it, but it does affect us as an art. You know, mm. I mean. We, 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 we bundle millions and millions of dollars into rugby and sport, and, and, mm. and, and which I totally understand. But I think our arts are equally as important. And, and not just mm. our cultural art. I mean, our ballet, our dance, our, mm. our, our orchestras, our musical composers, our artists, our actors, our singers, our professional dancers, you know? Mm. Uh, you know, this is all talent that comes from this country, and mm. this is an amazing country for the talent that it has well it all boils it boils down to self-expression and you know and it's you know if you're not letting letting the masses be um expressed then they are suppressed you know which is it's pretty clear well we had a situation in australia you know without being overly political but um they 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 took all the vet fee like all the the funding out of 50 acting courses 50 out of 80 acting like qualifications they took all the funding away and and basically the the minister in charge said that we don't want to fund people's lifestyle choices which just totally it totally said how they see how they see the arts in this country as well and it's tragic they just don't they don't get it i mean we we we're, we're very lucky um you know we we've sent our daughter to a to a, a school that really encourages creativity encourages um you know expression really encourages development of a of a human being before academic you know um which she'll get she'll no doubt get and uh yeah it, it is it's it's quite a, a frustrating state of affairs um when did you start singing yeah oh i started singing at school yeah. uh, what, you know i was in the i was in the, in the school choir mm. and um and then um just uh, i mean i really enjoy it it's it's a but it's a byproduct of what i do as an actor um, yeah. to be able to sing as well as act is a great bonus, you know, and I love I love musicals. I think mm. they're a great they're a great um, they're a great uh, bonus to your uh, ability to project yourself mm. and to, to to let people feel good about what you do. Mm. Uh, you know, I mean, I loved it in you know a middle aged man in Lycra. Um, there's a bit in the middle of it when um, when the, the character uh, Pinarello, um, which is the Italian bicycle, mm. it's an Italian bike that's called Pinarello. Buongiorno, buonasera a tutti. What are you looking at, Fanny Bumba? You think you can ride me? You can't ride me. You can't ride anything except the bus to Tane Sune Patri. Get on the bus, Fatty Bumba. And it was all this shit. Anyway, then. <laughs> and it's all this sort of stuff. But but it's just uh, Greg Cooper, who wrote it, yeah. um, knows me really well. Yeah. And, um, you know, when we came together three years ago mm. to talk about this, um, uh, he went away with a, with a, and then came back with the script. And, and to be honest, um, it's been one of the most enjoyable things I've ever done to mm. actually put this thing around New Zealand, which is nine characters, um, and, and play them, but play them so, so confidently and yet with such appeal to the audience. That it, I mean, we know we did six weeks in Christchurch, right, mm. at the court in a 400 seat venue. We did a hundred and one percent. That was amazing. Mm. Uh, every night was different. Every night was different. And you know, twenty twenty six and a half thousand people saw the show, mm. and it was it was such a great thing to do. And I, I guess it's hard to explain why I'm talking about that, but it was you know the rehearsal period and the first performance of it. it, it my I think my sphincter was like a pinhead, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. Um, did you get that bit? I, I, you froze. I was hoping you got that bit. <laughs> I definitely got that bit. It's recorded in the can. <clears throat> uh, uh, and uh, look, the, and, it was, and the review was terrible. The review was terrible. Some um, woman in Auckland wrote a terrible review about it. Didn't get it at all. Greg was so incensed that he actually wrote about a five-page um, uh, uh, um, response to her on his Facebook page saying you completely don't get it. You're an ignoramus. You have no idea what we're talking about. And um, and he was totally right because they completely missed it. But the good thing about that was we went on to tour the rest of the country and it's been a huge success. So, <laughs> you know, which we I love. We are very mature. We are very mature. We are, 
Yeah, we are. We're very, very mature, and um, and we we we, and we, 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 we take things we take things. We appreciate personally. criticism. We t- take things personally. Someone yeah. called someone called me an idiot on the car the other, the other day, and I had to drive up behind him and give him the fingers. And <laughs> basically, you're an idiot. Was like, that no, right? Right. no, no, you are. It's, it's terrible. No, I wasn't actually. It wasn't yeah. too bad. But he was the funny thing. He was actually driving on the footpath at the time, so it was quite. quite <laughs> no, no, because now you went lots of places um, with Mammal. Um, you went to a yeah. lot because you went and your mum and dad came and saw it. Yeah, in, yeah, um, yeah. In Papua, pa- pa- no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Leave it there. They were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The hunters. Yeah, exactly. I know. I well, know. And we played in the aircraft hangar. Yes, mate. On the on the second night we played, um, it was so hot in the hangar. Mm. But I had to stop the show, and we had to open the doors, mm. and everyone, because I could see everyone was. Sw- it's so funny being a performer on stage, the only performer on stage, and watching your audience suffer, yeah. you know, because they're sweating profusely from the heat. It was one of those Pawanui summers, you oh, know, we, which was great. We've had parties in there. My brother had his twenty first in there. I think the weather was was quite was, was quite similar. And um, yeah, like so, you must have toured that show for a long time. So, mammal, middle aged man, and lycra. Yeah, two years. Um, two years we did it, and we did it. I did a hundred and hundred and fifty performances of it. I think somewhere around there. And that got you and, into cycling. Uh, the cycling was great. I haven't been able to cycle since because I've been so busy. But we. Sarah and I, my eldest daughter and I, went for a ride here in Martinborough. Mm. And we nearly got we got run off the road by some person in a, in a car. So I thought, Jesus, this is too dangerous. So um, I mean, Sarah's um, Sarah and I have t- discussed this about car drivers and, and their intolerance of um, of, uh, of of cyclists. But I mean, you know, it's, it's clean and green New Zealand is, and, and wide and open. It's not really designed for for cyclists because cars whiz yeah, around oh, there and little cars. Especially roads. in Martin. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the thing is, you know, here's someone who's peddling, who's trying to, make, who's trying not to be, uh, 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 what do you call it, a, a plague on the the New Zealand health um, health um, budget yeah. uh, by smoking and and yeah. not exercising, and uh, we run off the road by a car. Hello. <laughs> you should go to Sweden because I went to Gothenburg once, and that that they've got cycle paths everywhere in Canberra. Yeah. If you ever get to Can, I mean, you, you've probably been to Canberra, but okay. Yeah. Two of my my um two of my great great uncles are on the First World War, um, oh. war. Yeah, that, that's that, that's amazing that museum. I remember going to the to the um to the big war mu- museum there, and Laura's like best oh. war in the world. Oh, incredible! And we get there, and they're like, "Do you want to take the ninety minute tour?" I'm like, I'm not taking a ninety minute tour of a museum. You know, I'll get bored. You know, and ha- I got halfway round in two hours. Um, yeah. And, yeah. and I, I didn't realise till afterwards, till I got to Wellington, that um, there's there's the great dog fight in you know the big room. Pete um, filmed that. I, I had no idea. He's like, oh really? How did it look? I said, it looks amazing. I don't think he'd ever. Well, seen you know, it. You, you know, we're all in the Dominion Museum behind the National War Memorial in Wellington. You, me, McTavish. Oh, we do. And, I had to do my faces. Yeah, yeah, and I, but you know, you, we're all embodied in in in, 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 yes. um, in you know Antics on Gallipoli. Yes. But, um, but the the Te Papa thing that Weta put together is absolutely outs. You went and saw that, didn't you? Uh, Have you seen it? No, I don't. I haven't been back to Wellington for a long time. No. Oh, it is unbelievable mm. what Weta did um, with putting it into uh, Te Papa, mm. um, the fourteen eighteen conflict. And wow. I mean, I did voiceover actually for Mon- uh, for um, Malone, mm. Lieutenant Colonel Malone, who was you know the New Zealanders on Gallipoli, mm. and he refused to go into battle during the daylight and waited till night time, mm-hmm. and it was. Um, you know, was was uh, was regarded as a bit of a, a, a villain, but he actually turned out to be the hero because he saved hundreds of lives. Mm. Um, and and I did the voice for him in the little. And I've had friends text me and say, "I'm in the bunker. I'm in Lieutenant Colonel Malone's bunker, and your voice <laughs> is with Malone." And you know what? It means the world to me. Yeah, it means the world to me. And I had uh, a <clears> comment <throat> from his relatives, um, you know, who said um, who went when it was first opened. They went into the bunker and heard me read Malone, mm. and they said it is so fitting, it is lovely. So you know that that means more to me than a lot of things, mm. actually, Stephen. To mm. be honest, um, to give things credit, to give things truth, to give things honour, mm. um, and, and to make it real. Mm. Uh, uh, th- that's what it means. That's mm. what it means. A, a lot of people watching these things are. are, are, are so, no, a, a lot of people watching these things are either interested in acting or, you know, they they find, I get a lot of comments saying, you know, the things we talk about help them in 
a lot of areas of their life, not just you know in, in the, the creative side. I mean, when when you have um, down moments and you're not busy creatively, how, how do you deal with those? Because I, sometimes I, 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 it can be quite difficult. It, it, oh, we've done it again. We've gone. Are you there? Are you back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you there? Hello. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Um, do you know what? They, they, they kill me. Yeah. They, 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 they kill me. But because I, I go, oh, my God, what have I lost? Mm. What's not there that was there? Mm. Why did, you know, and, I mean, I don't think it's about age. I really don't. I mm. think it's about your attitude and your head. Mm. And it's about what you what you uh, feel as a person and what you give to your career and what you give to the talent that you have. Uh, uh, anyway, that's a side of it. Mm. Um, what I do is I, um, I, I then go out to either work physically mm. around the home. Yeah. I go out and do something or I go and play golf, actually. Mm. I go and play golf. Mm. And I at a ball, and then um, uh, and then take a golf club and break it severely if it doesn't go well. <laughs> <laughs> but but you know the, the and phys- it's amazing. Yeah, the, the physically because you know we, we've rented a place. You can just sort of little see the green there, and I've got a veggie garden now, and I've had a veggie garden since I lived in New Zealand, and just going in there mowing the lawns, which I don't do that often, um, or you know using the old weed eater, and you know just watering yep. the garden is just it's just such a especially if it's if I haven't been busy. The worst thing for me is not being busy. But I, I know yeah. I, I know because you used to work with the navy, so you've got you've got other yep. things to focus yourself on as well. Yeah, how well, the important is it to have that to have that other that it, other part? It's of so important. Yeah so important it's so important i mean this year's been really busy because it's been the 75th anniversary of the royal new zealand navy mm. and so we had two plays that went around new zealand written by greg cooper the complete history of the Royal new zealand navy bridge and a commander claire and the pirates of Bramont. two shows that the navy toured throughout new zealand as part of the 75th mm. hugely successful Thirty thousand people have seen the shows it's been amazing mm. with the obit now, you know, obviously, I've, I've talked to her. We've we've heard all the stories. I mean, yep. what what were some of the, the the memories that'll last for you from that from that job, that crazy eighteen months that we all spent together? Oh, do you know, um, I think about this a lot, and there are times, and I talk with Jed about it a lot, um, uh, because I've known Jed for a long time. Hmm. Um, it, it, not just but about. Um, have you frozen? No. Nope. You still there? I think you're frozen again. I'm good. It's late at night. Yeah. In, in Martinborough. Yeah. I'm okay, good. Are you good? I'm yeah, not, yeah. I, yeah. You're frozen on me. No, I'm good. There you go. You're back. There okay. we go. Um, I, I, sorry, Jed, about it. There was something about the atmosphere that we all produced that created this um, this cocoon mm. of stuff that we could in, 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 engage in mm. that was like, our, uh, like a – it wasn't a school. It was like something that we could just for that – 12 or 8 to 12, 14 hours, we were something that was completely different to what we experienced outside of that. Yeah, yeah. That was very special. Yeah. I don't think I've ever felt like that before about anything that I've ever worked on. Yeah. That's why when I can talk to you now. It's like I've known you all my, my life. Yeah. You know, it's like, I mean, and I know this sounds a bit egotistical or, or a little bit wanky, but it's like I could go up to Sir Ian McKellen or Martin Freeman or Richard Armitage or Aidan Turner and say, Aidan, it's so good to see you. Um, so Ian, it's so lovely to see you. Martin, yeah. it's so good to see you. Shunts, it's so good to see you. Yeah. Um, in the, the Jed, all of it. And there is a bond mm. that I think came from that show that means more to me than anything else. Yeah. And you're right. It's like, it's, it's almost like time, there's no time's gone by. You run into them and go, hey, like it, like it was yesterday. Cause we'll, it's cause, like it was yesterday. Yeah. Because we, we went through some pretty extreme, you know, situations. There was a few injuries and there was a lot of, t- you know, a lot yeah. of late, big, long days. And, you know, we, we went through it. But, you know, it, uh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. And, and, and you know, and the, the funny stories and, 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 and you know, the, the – do you know, the beauty of that was when we first all got together was to hear the internationals yeah. go on about how they said on one of the first interviews was that that no one's any, you know, more more famous than anyone else. This mm. is a this is about a, a, a core of of mm. dwarves, the Hobbit, and 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 and, 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 and Gandalf. Yeah. Um, 
who are going on an adventure. Until and, they check their I, bank balances. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you know what? That yeah. didn't even bother me. No, 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 no. It didn't totally. even bother me. No, no. Because, you know, um, and, you know, it was about, it was about, it was about the camaraderie of, of, of us as men, as boys, mm. as, uh, and what, what I loved was that Pete used to love that. When we mm. came on set, you know, the little bastards are on set and he loved <laughs> the little it. little bastards, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I've still, I've still got my, my sweatshirt because so I, I, yeah, well, so I, I, yeah. I, I gave it to my dad and then he passed away, and so I took it back. Although it's what way? It's way too big. It's way too big. It was way too big for me before I lost weight. But yeah. uh, hey, it's, how how are you since your dad passed away? You right? Yeah, yeah, and I'm fine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's yeah. a tough time, I, and, and I, yeah, it, and it's 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 um. It was funny because I actually went. I, I did some counselling, and I don't, I'm not afraid to tell tell everyone about it. But you know, I did some counselling after that because it was a tough time. And um, yeah. you know, I've been in Australia, and you know, hadn't really been home a lot. And you know, there's all that sort of stuff about not being around. And and I, I went to see her, and she said, "You've been you've been grieving for three years. First for your job, and then yeah. for your then for your dad." And it was like, yeah. And that's why I ask about post Hobbit to all these guys because there was like a bit of a grief thing, and yeah, uh, uh, the, the that, way I, I explain to people like it's you get given the best job in the world, you know people yeah. people have great jobs and they work them for life. We have got the best job, and then after eighteen months, they go, "That's it, see, you, <laughs> you can go home now." So, but I don't want to go home. I mean, I guess the the thing that I I you know you and I experienced that as at an older age. I, I guess what I what I felt hurt more than anything was not being able to be there for Adam, mm. you know, when his dad died, because he mm. was so much younger than you and I. Mm, yeah, um, yeah. From the perspective of, of, of his dad dying. And, and that's always meant, to, you know, he rang me on, 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 on the, the, like, like hours after his dad died. And mm. I was, I was driving to, I was driving to Palmerston North. Mm. I, I stopped the car, you know, and, and that's, that's what, that, that, you know, life still goes on. Mm. You know, I guess that's what we were talking about before when you said what makes you aware of, you know, nothing's going to change mm. you move on. I, I think those things make you really aware of how important our lives are from the perspective mm. of the reality of our lives yeah. and our family and our kids and our relations and, and mm. all that sort of thing. The, yeah. You know, the books behind you on the shelf and the seat mm. and the sofa and all that. It, it, mm. Stephen, you know, and the mates that we have. Yeah. It was, that, a, it was a bloody wine because I, I, I tell Adam this sometimes to make ourselves feel better. I've got a great photo of, of, of my dad and, and, and Adam's dad um, sitting there drinking this wine and they, someone bought a particularly nice bottle of wine and they'd never tried it before. And, yeah, you know, so, so, so we, 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 we always put it down to that. But I, I think it was the – I think I was lucky because m- mum and dad got to come to the, uh, the premiere, the Wellington, that lovely little Wellington one we did at the Desolation Smile because I've got a great photo of dad photobombing William Kircher on the red carpet and getting told to move out of the road. Um, well. Yeah, yeah. And, How's it uh, going in Los Angeles? He's good. I think he's he's working well. I think he's yeah. He's 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 taken the leap, and he's he's just uh, you know. Yeah. I, I hope to talk to him. I, I, Admire him, mate. Yeah. That, that that takes a lot of courage, and he's just gone out and he's done it. You know. But I, I remember a particular night we had. Um, I think we all ended up at um, Cian's place for something, and uh, I in think. Love- I think we're going to... No, 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 this isn't Wellington. And there was something on... I thought we were going to watch rugby, but they ended up having some dinner or something like that. I don't know what was going on. And I just... I, I was going to take Dad, and then Mum came along as well. And I remember going in there, and it was... it was Yeah, there was a few more people there than I thought. And and I remember Billy Connolly was there. And I've, I've, I've emailed Billy since then and, and Ian about it. And I remember Dad is, was such a huge fan of Billy Connolly. And, and he... He got to sit and he got to stand and chat to him, and I just remember seeing his face and having the wines, and that was that that was and literally that was when we did pickups, and you know when within you know within a year he was gone, and so you know it was that that was almost like the time of his life, you know, and I yeah. just remember that, and I, and I remember I, I emailed Billy and I said I think you know I don't you know this was that that was one of the the most amazing nights of his life you know meeting everybody and how what i liked and you say about the people being in, inclusive with those guys and you know you know he always made the comment to me that you know he always felt included and he always felt part of the part of like the you know with you guys obviously but also the overseas guys you know he said that we always felt part of it you know and he was really impressed so that was it was 
there was no there was no invasion. No, that's what I loved. Mm. You know, like I mean, these you know, you know, these were the these were the these were very serious contenders for mm. so like as big actors in the world. Mm. But there didn't seem to be that at all. Mm. And I I just love that. Yeah. I just think. And, and, I mean, Martin Freeman remains one. I mean, you and I have discussed this endlessly <laughs> about choices that, that Martin Freeman mm. made as Bilbo. Yeah. And that was one of the things that I got out of the filming was watching Martin Freeman work. And, and Richard Armitage, all, mm. all, all of them. Right. And, 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 and I've, 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 I've said this to, to people as well that, you know, because quite often, and that's why I made that comment about, you know, being the fourth sword from the from the right, because a lot of the times as an actor, well, yeah, a lot of the times as an actor, like if, you, if you're not, if it's not your scene, you've just got a job to do and, and you've, got to, you, you've got to fill the space and you've got to do something, you've got to be active, you've got to be actively thinking, all that sort of stuff. A lot of us was A to B and, and we, had to, we had to be consistent. We had to keep our consistency and keep our continuity. But Martin is the lead. His job was to give, throw up all these choices, and, and some of the things he'd throw up, and just a whole lot of different options for Pete, it was just incredible. Just watching it, and I found it absolutely educational. Yeah, and so, so, um, so riveting as an actor yeah. to see another actor make those choices. Yeah, that was riveting for me. And then, and and then Richard to follow Richard mm. was not a was not a because he's the lead. Mm. I followed Richard the man that he was. Yeah, yeah. That's what I used to feel when I came on set. Yeah. Richard, there was the, I mean, I'm in the Navy, right? I'm a lieutenant commander in the Navy. Mm. And I, and, and even if I'd have been an able seaman, mm. I would have followed Richard into the, <laughs> yeah. you know, into battle, you know. Yeah. I mean, it what? was just because, you know, it, 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 he had that mm. feeling, you know. <clears throat> and I think it helped, like, the way, because, because we filmed it, you know, I guess, sequentially you know it was it was all in order um we we met we were sort of strangers in a way when we were in bag end and that's how the story went and slowly 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 we got to know each other and that's how the story went because someone asked me like what was it like was it hard filming the scene when martin was leaving i said well it was hard because it was it was it was like it was hard emotionally but as an actor, it was probably the easiest scene because we were Martin was leaving three, two or three days after, or the day after, and we were yeah. saying goodbye to him. That, that was the easiest. Yeah. It was just the, it was just us and him, and that was yeah. that was one of the most beautiful moments I think we, we filmed because, yeah, it was I was it was just action bang, you know, and yeah, it was amazing. Look, the whole thing was amazing, Stephen. I, you know, for all the for all the handicaps and prosthetics and. And uh, and all that and and you know and that's when you have to hold your head up high and say thanks to all the guys behind you who made you the way you were mm. you know like Don and, and and all your makeup artists and and all that um, and all the crews you know, that work twenty four hours the, to get the sets, just, sets built <laughs> giving you oh yeah. uh, uh, just amazing yeah. never, never experience of my life it's yeah that. well mate w w we could talk for hours I'm gonna let you go I know it's getting late over there yeah. Th th thanks for talking about ourselves. It's been a pleasure to talk to you and find a little bit about life as an actor for Mark Hadlow. Um, and, mate, great to see you again. Likewise. Straight back at you. I, I, you know what I hope for? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> <Stephen>. <laughs> you, know what, you, know, you, you know what I hope for? Freeze. <laughs> what, what? what do you hope for? I hope to work with you again. Me too. Be fantastic. Me too. You take care. Yeah, nah, sweet.